Welcome to the SCP Foundation. I am 05-4, and today you will be briefed on SCP-049. And actually, I'm going to break character for this one. Because of the way SCP-49 is laid out, it is immersion breaking anyway. And so let's go ahead and jump into it. And you can see what I mean here with the menu. Yeah, that goes all the way down. So anyways, item number SCP-049, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-049 is contained within a standard secure humanoid containment cell in Research Sector 02 at Site-19. SCP-49 must be sedated before any attempts to transport it. During transport, SCP-49 must be secured within a Class III humanoid restriction harness, including a locking collar and extension restraints, and monitored by no fewer than two armed guards. While SCP-49 is generally cooperative with most Foundation personnel, outbursts or sudden changes in behavior are to be met with elevated force. Under no circumstances should any personnel come into direct contact with SCP-49 during these outbursts. In the event SCP-49 becomes aggressive, the application of lavender has been shown to produce a calming effect on the entity. Once calmed, SCP-49 generally becomes compliant and will return to containment with little resistance. In order to facilitate the ongoing containment of SCP-49, the entity is to be provided with the corpse of a recently deceased animal, typically a bovine or other large mammal, once every two weeks for study. Corpses that become instances of SCP-49 TAC-2 are to be removed from SCP-49's containment cell and incinerated. SCP-49 is no longer permitted to interact with human subjects, and requests for human subjects are to be denied. Temporary Containment Procedure Update See Addendum 049.3 Per Containment Committee Order 049.S19.17.1 SCP-049 is no longer permitted to interact directly with any members of Foundation staff, nor is it to be provided with any additional corpses to be used in its surgeries. This order shall persist indefinitely, until such time a consensus regarding the ongoing containment of SCP-49 can be reached. Description: SCP-49 is a humanoid entity, roughly 1.9 meters in height, which bears the appearance of a medieval plague doctor. While SCP-49 appears to be wearing the thick robes and ceramic mask indicative of that profession, the garments instead seem to have grown out of SCP-49's body over time and are now nearly indistinguishable from whatever form is beneath them. Footnote 1. The robes and gloves are identical to a thick hide built up on the skin, while the mask is composed of a kind of chitin growing out of the bones of the face. X-rays indicate that despite this, SCP-49 does have a humanoid skeletal structure beneath its outer layers. SCP-49 is capable of speech in a variety of languages, though it tends to prefer English or medieval French. Footnote 2. The entity claims to have originated in 15th century France, though admits that it is particularly well-traveled. There's a hyperlink for particularly well-traveled. I do recommend checking that out. While SCP-49 is generally cordial and cooperative with Foundation staff, it can become especially irritated or at times outright aggressive if it feels that it is in the presence of what it calls the pestilence. Although the exact nature of this pestilence is currently unknown to Foundation researchers, it does seem to be an issue of immense concern to SCP-49. SCP-49 will become hostile with individuals it sees as being affected by the pestilence, often having to be restrained should it encounter such. If left unchecked, SCP-49 will generally attempt to kill any such individual. SCP-49 is capable of causing all biological functions of an organism to cease through direct skin contact. How this occurs is currently unknown, and autopsies of SCP-49's victims have invariably been inconclusive. SCP-49 has expressed frustration or remorse after these killings, indicating that they have done little to kill the pestilence, though will usually seek to then perform a crude surgery on the corpse using the implements contained within a black doctor's bag it carries on its person at all times. Footnote 3. 
The space within this bag is seemingly anomalously large, as SCP-49 has been observed pulling objects larger than the bag itself from within it in order to operate on deceased subjects. While these surgeries are not always successful, they often result in the creation of instances of SCP-049-2. SCP-049-2 instances are reanimated corpses that have been operated on by SCP-49. These instances do not seem to retain any of their prior memories or mental functions, having only basic motor skills and response mechanisms. While these instances are generally inactive, moving very little and in a generally ambulatory fashion, they can become extremely aggressive if provoked or if directed to by SCP-49. SCP-49 TAC-2 instances express active biological functions, though these are vastly different from currently understood human physiology. Despite these alterations, SCP-49 often remarks that the subjects have been cured. Addendum 049.1 Discovery SCP-049 was discovered during the investigation of a series of unknown disappearances in the town of Montauban in southern France. During a raid on a local home, investigators found several instances of SCP-49 TAC-2 as well as SCP-49. While law enforcement personnel engaged the hostile 049 TAC-2 instances, SCP-49 was noted as watching the engagement and taking notes in its journal. After all of the 049 TAC-2 instances were dispatched, SCP-49 willingly entered Foundation custody. Here's an image. SCP-49 upon discovery. The following interview was conducted by Dr. Raymond Hamm during the initial investigation. I'll go ahead and play the audio for you, and I'll scroll along with the transcript. Is that, is that French? Can we get a translator? The King's English. No need for translation, sir. I can speak it well enough. Good. My name is Dr. Raymond Ham, and I... Ah, uh, a doctor. A like-minded individual, no doubt. Wherein is your speciality, sir? Cryptobiology. Why? <laughs> a medical man, such as myself, wanders abound. And here, I worried I had been abducted by common street thugs. This place, then, this is your laboratory. I had wondered, as clean as it is, and with such little trace of the pestilence here. The pestilence? What do you mean? The scourge. The great dying. Come now. You know, the... Mm, what is it they call it? The... The... Ah, no matter. The pestilence, yes. It abounds outside these walls, you know. So many have succumbed. And many more will continue to, until such time as a perfect cure can be developed. Fortunately, I am very close. It is my duty in life to rid the world of it, you see. The cure to end all cures. When you say the great dying, are you talking about the bubonic plague? I don't know what that is. Oh, I see. Right, well... The entities our agents encountered at the house, uh, they were dead when you encountered them. Yes, you reanimated them. Hmm. In a manner of speaking, you see things too simply, Doctor. Expand your horizons. Life and death. Sickness and health. These are amateur terms for amateur physicians. There is only one ailment that exists in the world of men, and that is the pestilence, and nothing else. Make no mistake, they were very ill. All of them. You think you cured those people? Indeed. My cure is most effective. But the things we recovered were not human. Yes, well, it is not a perfect cure, but that will come with time, and further experimentation. I have spent a lifetime Developing my methods, Dr. Ham, and will spend a lifetime more, if necessary. Now, we have wasted too much time. There is work to do. 
I will require a laboratory of my own, one where I can continue my research unimpeded. And assistance, of course, though I can provide those on my own in time. <laughs> oh, I don't think our organization would be willing to... Nonsense. We are all men of science. Fetch your coat and show me to my quarters, Doctor. Our work begins now. End log. Interviewer's note. While SCP-49 is capable of communicating in a very human way, there is a strange sense of unease that one experiences when in its presence. Make no mistake, there is something very uncanny about this entity indeed. Additionally, we've confiscated that pointed stick that SCP-49 keeps waving around. Part of this was due to standard confiscation protocols for the possessions of anomalies, and part because 049 really is a menace swinging around like he does. The entity was displeased at first, but after we made some concessions in providing it with test subjects, which are, admittedly, more for the benefit of our own research, it warmed up to the idea. Addendum 049.2 Observation Log While in containment at Site-19, SCP-49 has spent a considerable amount of time studying and performing surgery on the various mammalian corpses it has been provided. SCP-49 will routinely spend several days performing surgery, and then, regardless of whether or not the corpse becomes an instance of SCP-49-2, spending several more days documenting its findings in a thick leather journal stored within its doctor's bag. SCP-49 will often seek to share its findings with members of Foundation staff. The following is a log of several occasions during which SCP-49 was observed operating on a mammalian corpse. Observational Log 049.OscarLima.1 Summary Subject SCP-49 Preface A test subject D-85123 was introduced into SCP-49's containment cell. The entity expressed sincere gratitude towards all members of the containment and research staff. Observation Notes SCP-49 began by asking D-85123 several standard medical questions as it began removing tools from its bag. Shortly after finishing its preparations, SCP-49 quickly closed the distance between the two, killing the subject with a touch to its throat. Afterwards, SCP-49 made a number of considerable alterations to the basic structure of the subject's corpse, often introducing fluids from within its bag into the subject by way of a hand-powered pump and copper tubing. The resulting 49 tag 2 instance became animated, flailing and grasping at the walls of the chamber with a number of manufactured limbs while moaning out of an oblong orifice now present in its sternum. During this time, SCP-49 was observed taking notes of the instance in its journal and remarking to the watching research staff about the efficacy of its cure. Security personnel entered the chamber to move SCP-49 back to containment and were attacked by the instance. The security team dispatched a 049 tac 2 instance, and SCP-49 returned to containment with no resistance, stating that it was pleased with the results. Observation Log 049.OscarLima.2 Summary Subject SCP-049 Preface SCP-49 was provided the corpse of a recently deceased goat. SCP-49 expressed gratitude at the provision. Observation Notes SCP-49 operated on the goat corpse for several days, eventually resulting in an instance of SCP-49 TAC-2. SCP-49 expressed pleasure in this outcome, though admitted the disease was still in its nascent stage. My veterinarian practice is rudimentary, but the patient responded well to the procedure. Observation Log 049.OscarLima.3 Summary Subject SCP-49 Preface, SCP-49 was provided the corpse of a recently deceased orangutan. SCP-49 expressed noted gratitude at the provision due to the similarities between the orangutan and common human physiology. Observation Notes, SCP-49 spent several days operating on the orangutan, reanimating it several times. However, SCP-49 appeared to be discontent with the results it experienced, returning to the creature three times after its initial reanimation for additional work. After it was unable to reanimate the corpse a fifth time, SCP-49 turned the corpse over to Foundation staff for incineration, stating, I have learned so much from this, though I fear my early optimism was misplaced. I hadn't yet come across such a 
a stumbling block on my road to the cure. More subjects like this would do a great deal in advancing my research. Observation log 049 point Oscar Lima point seven full. Subject SCP-49. SCP-49 was provided the corpse of a recently deceased bovine. SCP-49 expressed mild annoyance at the provision, though accepted it nonetheless. Footnote 4. SCP-49 had stated its desire to work on human subjects several times between this occasion and the earlier provision of an orangutan, noting its discontentedness when they would not be provided. Observation Notes SCP-49 spent several days operating on the bovine corpse, breaking only to dine on a requested dinner of thin crackers, salted pork, and hard cheese. Footnote 5. SCP-49 has expressed that it does not require sustenance, but enjoys it and feels that the food helps to put it in the right mind to operate. Beginning first by embalming the corpse, SCP-49 was observed producing a number of long syringes from its bag, each containing a different dark viscous fluid. SCP-49 described these fluids as essences of the humors and elaborated by saying the pestilence may bring about a systematic imbalance in such a case, before true healing can begin, one must find the humor's imbalance or the body will reject the cure. Footnote 6. SCP-49 added to this statement by saying, This is, of course, elementary knowledge for the practical physician, which is hyperlinked. I do recommend checking it out. I would have thought you would have learned this during your education. Over the next few days, SCP-49 spent a considerable amount of time adjusting the organs of the bovine corpse with a number of large metal instruments. After eight days, SCP-49 produced a lightning rod, which Dr. Ham exchanged for an electric cattle prod attached to an extension cord, and struck the corpse in several locations. This action seemingly had the effect of reanimating the bovine, which once again became ambulatory despite the inversion of the head and reorientation of its limbs. Now, there's another audio log. I'll go ahead and play it while scrolling along with it. We've watched you work for several weeks now, and honestly, I'm not sure I understand what you're doing. Could you describe your process in detail? Oh, goodness, no. The process is most intensive. And interrupting, there's a footnote. Footnote 7. Notably, SCP-49's journals are not written in any known language, and attempts by linguists and codebreakers to decipher them have been unsuccessful. Any known language is hyperlinked. Check it out. As I said to your assistant, the best instruction you will find about my methods are here in my journals, as I have kept exhaustive records of my work there. I see. Well, my concern, Doctor, is that we still don't understand what you're seeking to cure, or how it manifests, or how turning these creatures into quasi-living, mindless drones helps in that effort. You do not understand the pestilence, even after all this time. Doctor... It is an unspeakable horror, one that has shown its true face many times before, and will again. I find myself blessed with the wisdom and good senses needed to root it out and destroy it. But many, like yourself, cannot. It is a cruel judgment, I fear, to be at the mercy of a disease you cannot fully comprehend. That still doesn't answer my question. How's your cure any kind of cure at all? It is a cure. You may laugh at my efforts if you please, but do not besmirch the good name of scientific progress that has developed this great mercy. What you short-sightedly see here is a life better than any this creature could have hoped for. Stricken as it was with the pestilence, this creature is now clean unable to spread the pestilence, and free from the terror it would have experienced otherwise. This is hardly a creature at all, Doctor. It's not even... Do not jape with me, sir. You and your colleagues are like so many others, unable to look past minor setbacks to see the salvation taking place before your very eyes. Do you wait to remove rotten timbers until the hall collapses on top of you? No. You find them, and you pull them out and replace them with those untouched by rot. And most of all, you do not simply mock the structure, because it now looks different to you. It is strong. It is free of disease. 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to agitate you. I, I'm just trying to understand. Yes. Well, do mind your words in the future, Doctor. I am a professional, but even professionals may feel the bite of pride in dealing with criticism of their masterpiece. I will forgive this as an act of good faith between colleagues. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that will be all. Another test subject on the usual schedule. You know my preference of subjects with more human anatomies. Attending researchers note, as CP-49 does seem to genuinely want to help other humans, though it has not yet been able to provide a concrete example of what exactly it is trying to save us all from. I have watched it now over several weeks, and while the outcomes do not seem to ever change, as CP-49 continues to claim that it is growing closer to its perfect cure. I think the entity may be more aware of the reality of these outcomes than it would like us to think. Addendum 049.3, April 16th, 2017 Incident Starting shortly after SCP-49's initial containment, Dr. Ham conducted a number of interviews with the subject regarding its anomalous properties, and over time began to note its displeasure with its subjects and SCP-49 TAC-2 instances. This continued for a period of several months, during which SCP-49 never exhibited any aggressive behaviors. On April 16, 2017, as Dr. Ham was entering SCP-49's test chamber to conduct another routine interview, the entity began to grow anxious and asked Dr. Ham if he was feeling well. Following protocol, Dr. Ham reminded SCP-49 that the interview was required, after which the entity became hostile and attacked Dr. Ham, killing him. Due to a lapse in security protocol and because Dr. Ham did not activate the in-chamber emergency system, Dr. Ham's corpse was not discovered until three hours later, by which point SCP-49 had converted it into an instance of SCP-49 TAC-2. In the aftermath of this incident, SCP-49 was interviewed by Dr. Theron Sherman. I need you to explain yourself. SCP-049, you are being directed to explain your actions. And I will remind you that failure to cooperate will result in further restrictions during your containment. My actions do not need to be explained. You killed Raymond Ham, and then butchered him until not he- Not dead. No, not, not dead. He is, he is cured. Cured? Cured of what? The pestilence, sir. I had thought you, at least would realize what luck it is. I detected it before. What pestilence? You keep going on and on about this pestilence, but you have not once been able to properly identify this disease. What could you have possibly seen in him today that you had not seen so many times before? That it would be worth his life? He... The pestilence presents and progresses in unforeseeable fashions and has a queer way of... of creeping into the unprepared. And... Call it what you want, Doctor. It was a mercy I did to him. He is cured. He is a vegetable. I... I would not expect you to understand. You and your... your ilk have proven time and time again not to be men of science, but men of... of emotion. You cannot appreciate the horrors I have seen. Those many millions who have succumbed to the pestilence and been changed. Your cure cost Ray his life. No, good sir. I have saved it. You would allow this world to slip back into the, the despair of disease and death, ignoring that I have created a miracle. And what disease? What pestilence? He was a healthy man. He was a good doctor. I'm offering it freely to the afflicted. You are not worth this argument, sir. You are short-sighted and foolish. Dr. Ham was sick, and I... I cured him. I am the only one who can do this. My work must continue. There is still so much to learn, so much I've had to enough do. of this. And Consider your allowances were saved. Even you. Welcome oh, to containment, 049. Might be saved. We're done here. I can save them all. I can cast down this plague once and for all. 
I can do this. Only me, I am. I saved him. I saved him. Dr. Ham. I... I cured him. He was sick. I know he was sick. I know he was. And I... You are all sick. But I... I can save you. I can save all of you. Because I... I... am the cure. Addendum 049.4 Post-Incident Report Interview The following interview is an excerpt from the 4-16-17-049 Incident Report. The interview was conducted by Dr. Elijah Itkin and took place three weeks after the start of the initial investigation. SCP-049, we are conducting this interview to close out our investigation of your actions taken on April 16th that resulted in the death of a staff member. Do you have any comments to make? Only that I look forward to the day when you will allow me to resume my work. I have spent the last few weeks compiling my notes and constructing a new theory for how the pestilence was able to infect someone in such an insidious manner that I nearly couldn't detect it. Have you experienced any remorse for your actions? For the death of Dr. Ham? Ah, yes. Well, the death of a colleague is... Always regrettable, but in the face of the pestilence, we must be swift, Doctor, and act without hesitation. Dr. Sherman noted in his report that you seemed to be mournful during your initial interview. Mourn? Perhaps. I had not thought that. It is lamentable that a fellow doctor became infected, but the work continues. Regrettable as, as it was, Dr. Ham's death provided important insight. Living human subjects are the only way to proceed forward, I am decided. My cure is of little use on dead flesh, and I have gleaned all I can from your generous supply of corpses. My desires turn towards tending to those still living who suffer from the disease. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> oh, Doctor... I wouldn't be so sure. And as you could see, the Oh Doctor, I Wouldn't Be So Sure does end in a hyperlink. And that concludes your briefing on SCP-49. There are a lot of different tales in regards to SCP-49, and there's also some cross-pollination in regards to this SCP. This is one of the most popular SCPs on the entirety of the wiki. I do recommend giving all of those tales a read uh, if this particular skip interests you. Remember, we secure, contain, and protect. We die in the dark so that they can live in the light. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, and ring the bell if you'd like to see more. If you didn't enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a comment as to why. Uh, please try to keep your comments uh, constructive if you can. And, well, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your whatever.